Okay, as you can see in today's video, we're going to be going over charging an inductor, an example problem in a simple RL circuit. We're going to have a 2 ohm resistor, our R, and an 80 millihenry an inductor. That is our L and a 20 volt source. So let's just get started. This is the circuit we're going to use. We're going to be charging an inductor in an RL circuit. And these are the four things we're going to do. We're going to determine what will the maximum of the steady state current be through the circuit. We are going to determine when the inductor will be fully charged. We are going to determine what will be the induced voltage across the inductor after 25 milliseconds. And the fourth thing is we will determine what the current will be through the circuit after two time constants. So let's just get started. We want to know what the maximum or the steady state will, will the current will be. Well, when the current reaches this maximum, when the current reaches this steady state, the inductor will no longer kind of be playing a part. It will be no longer delaying. Uh, current through the circuit and all the voltage will be across the resistor. We really then we just have a resistor and a source and uh, this acts like a short, our inductor. So we can just use Ohm's law V equals I times R. The current is the voltage divided by the resistance. The voltage is a 20 volt source and a 2 ohm resistor. That means the maximum current, the eventual maximum current will be 10 amps. Okay, pretty straightforward. Number one, now, number two, we want to know what, when will the inductor be fully charged? Well, we assume that the inductor will be fully charged just like we did with capacitors and RC circuits after five time constants. So we've got to figure out what the time constant is first. Tau is the symbol we use for time constants. For an RL circuit, we simply calculate the time constant as L, the inductance of the inductor, divided by R, the resistance of the resistor. We have an 80 millihenry, that's 0.08 henrys, divided by 2. And that just gives us 0.4. 0 0.4, 0 0.04 seconds, which is 40 milliseconds. I'm going to multiply that by 5 because it's 5 time constants. That's when we consider the inductor to be fully charged. And the same thing we had with an RC circuit after 5 time constants, the capacitor is fully charged. 5 times T, T, excuse me, tau here is 5 times 40, 200 milliseconds, and that's actually also 0 0.2 seconds. Okay? Number two. Number three is now what do we want to know? What will be the induced voltage across the inductor after 25 milliseconds? You should notice that 25 milliseconds is less than one time constant. One time constant is 40 milliseconds. So that should help us figure out where we got kind of the right answer. This is the equation we use. The voltage with respect to time is equal to the voltage of the battery because the initial voltage across the inductor is the voltage of the battery, but then it's going to be reduced. All right. So by multiplying E raised the power of minus T R times L, E is a mathematical constant, 2.718, and T is the time, 25 milliseconds, R is the resistor, L is the inductance of the inductor, and I'm going to kind of just do that on the side here, make it a little clearer, T R L, that is time is 25, zero, 25 milliseconds, which is 0 0.025 seconds, times 2 divided by 0 0.08, the inductance of the inductor. We have kind of our base unit seconds and henrys. If we do that, we get 0 0.625. That means the voltage with respect to time is 20 volts, because that's the voltage of the source, times E raised to the power of minus, don't forget your minus sign, 0 0.625. And that gives us E raised to this power is 0 0.535. That means it'll be 53% of the initial maximum voltage. Remember, after one time constant, this is less than one time constant, after one time constant, the voltage across the inductor is reduced to 36.8%. Well, this is less than one time constant. This is less than 36, still more than 36, uh, hasn't been reduced to 36.8% yet. So that looks good, makes sense, and therefore we multiply that and we get that the voltage with respect to time after 25 milliseconds will be 10.7 volts. All right, clear. Last thing we're going to do, we're going to figure out the current through the time, through the, through the uh, what is it, the current through the circuit after two time constants, one time constant is 40 milliseconds, 10 is our eventual maximum current. And this is the equation we use. The current with respect to time is the maximum current. Sometimes you'll see people right here, V divided by R, because that's how we calculate the maximum, the voltage of the source divided by the resistance of the resistor. But I put I max here, because we calculated that already, is 1 minus E, 1 minus E raised to the power of TRL. Again, we'll calculate the TRL over here. 
time, this is two time constants, that's 40, 80 milliseconds, two and again 0 0.08, and we get that this is 80 milliseconds, 0 0.08 seconds, times two divided by 0 0.08 henrys. You'll notice this is one, and if this is two time constants, this value should turn out to be two, which it does, of course. And that means that it's 10 times one minus e to the negative two. If this is two time constant, then this is, min then this is minus two. If it was three, minus three, minus four, minus five, all that kind of thing. All right, so then this is 10, and then one minus e raised to the minus two is 0 0.864, which is 86.4. If you remember in the previous video, which you can link to in the upper right, I went through how we get those values for one, two, three, four, five time constants for the current and the voltage. And you should remember that after one time constant, the current is 63.2%, and after two time constants, the current is always going to be 86.4% of the eventual maximum. So 86.4 or 0 0.864 times 10 is obviously 8.64. I don't know why I have a 4 here. This should be 4. Um, <clears throat> probably with rounding, but this is 0. This is 8.65 amperes. Same with the value we have here. Okay? So I think that's all we want to do. We did all four of those things. We got the current, the charging through the time constant, the voltage after a given time, and the current through the circuit after a given time. All right, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video, and of course, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.